I, I first started uh, when I was at Long Beach City College and uh, I was walking through the art department, never had any art before, never took any art class before I got to Long Beach City College. And I saw this pottery being made on a wheel. I saw it. And I thought, whoa, I was just totally infatuated. I said, and it was, just, it was just something that I'd never seen before. It was so, um, it was three dimensional, uh, it was visceral. That's a cool buzzword, you know, I learned in college. Uh, and, but it was really, uh, really exciting to see. And I just got, and I go, man, I have to do that one day. And so uh, when my time, when it came around, you know, when my time, when it came around to, to take some, get some electives and take some classes, I, I, I focused on pottery. And then I had this terrific teacher, Toshi, Toshiko Goto, and um, she was, she challenged me like no one has ever challenged me in, in, uh, in an institution, I should say. Um, and uh, it was wonderful. I learned so much from her. And so I was, I, I became, you know, at that point, I, I thought I was going to become a potter. And so I asked her uh, who her, she kept telling me her teacher's name, and she goes, oh, you have to study with this person. And I just kind of heard about her, and uh, who, who was uh, Marguerite Wildenhain. I didn't know anything about Mar Marguerite Wildenhain. She goes, no, no, this is my teacher. You have to study with her. And so, um, and so she gave me a letter of introduction. In fact, I met her up at her at her school um, with with the uh, what's that um, with a uh, with I met my, my teacher met my teacher met her teacher and had me meet her. Was that a letter of, like an introduction? And so I was introduced to her teacher, Toshiko Goto's teacher, Margaret Waldenheim, who was from the Bauhaus in Dessau, Germany, one of the first students of the Bauhaus. And uh, when I met her, she was already maybe in her 60s. And I finally studied with her when she was in her 70s. Um, and so it was, but man, she was powerful. And, uh, and that, was, that was my foundation in art. It was uh, because she taught me everything. I mean, she taught me drawing, um, design, uh, three-dimensional design, uh, all through pottery and um, tile and, and, and um, tiling because we had to use uh, glazes on tiles. We used slips actually. We didn't fire anything. We just made things and destroyed them. Made things and destroyed them. We, but we made it to the finite. We made it pristine. We made the, the, the most pristine piece of pottery that, that we could make. But after her criticisms, they weren't so pristine. <laughs> we had to, we, we, we were, we were, uh, we were more than enthusiastic to recycle the clay and to make more pots. And this is how I learned. We made over, uh, each individual made uh, over uh, several hundred pots in the summer with Marguerite, uh, with her teachings. And, um, but what we learned, we brought home with us in, inside. And so um, that was, that was uh, the education that I, you know, that was part of my education. A great, uh, a very important part of my education, and of course I went to the the, the hoops and, and learned a lot. Actually, learned a lot from the the other instructors in, in City College and in, in San Diego State College, which I eventually transferred to. And then from there I went to Japan because I wanted to. Uh, uh, it was a time of you know love the country or leave the country. So I wasn't too happy with my country <laughs> at the time Vietnam, you know. <laughs> and so I uh, arranged to. Uh, uh, learn more about myself and, and my and my heritage, and uh, and at that time I wanted to take that and they that opportunity to uh, I had an opportunity to I so I took it and went and I was able to uh, work in a pottery factory which wasn't my first choice but it was um, it was work and it was in the, in the field that I wanted to pursue and so um, I did that for six months six to eight months I believe. And, uh, but during that time, I met a stone sculptor, a sculptor who worked in stone and uh, who um, carved stone. And we're talking ton big pieces. We're talking five tons of stone. And, and you know, small pieces were half a ton of stone. And he would just, you know, bring out the pneumatic tools and, and uh, air compressors and just, just grind away and drill away and, and carve away on these big pieces of granite that uh, I was able to um, um, be his assistant for a couple of couple of years so that was pretty that was pretty good he was creating uh, there are more um, abstract pieces uh, uh, 
I would say simple forms, but uh, but organic and simple and large. And but they they all they all had something of a of a uh, energy to them, um, a breath to them, and uh, and he was in he's in some of the books, you know, some art books, but but um, uh, yeah, it was it was very unique, very unique stuff. His he actually studied when I studied with him. I was old, I was in my uh, early twenties uh, when I worked with him. Um, he was already in his fifties or sixties, I believe, and then, but he his teacher was a um, a his teacher's teacher studied with Augustus Rodin, and so you know, there's a kind of a um, kind of a lineage of of me picking up stuff here and there, you know, me, me uh, having the opportunity to study with Marguerite Wildenheim, who was from the Bauhaus, who worked studying in the Bauhaus. Uh, her, her teachers were uh, Kandinsky, Paul Clay, Walter Gropius, the architect, um, uh, Kurhan Marx, uh, the a sculptor, um, uh, you know, just, just all these, just all these people that, you know, that, that, wow, I was, I, I, they absorbed their, Information. My teachers absorb their information and and pass it on to me, and s somehow so through osmosis or just direct, um, direct education, right there. You know, just there it is. Pretty impressive. I was impressed. <laughs> you know, I was overwhelmed actually, and, and and being so young and naive, I just absorbed it all, that, not knowing what what I was really absorbing, but what I was absorbing was actually greatness. You know, and and um, had I known that at the time, I would have probably been a little bit more humble. <laughs> you know, no, but I was a good kid. I was a good, humble student. I was very, uh, I studied very hard, worked very hard for these people, and for myself. And after that, I just kind of, just kind of uh, was trying to find my own way. I, I, I made pottery for a while, and and uh, I, I was just, I built a house. I, married and children and and just worked and picked up jobs here and there you know and uh, and did a little traveling just just you know what it is it's, it's just what I've done really is, is live you know and then that's that's what they that was that's the bottom line this is what they were with what they were teaching me and um, is to live you have to be able to live and and uh, live a life in order to uh, grow and continue with what, what you have and what I have been given. And, um, and so I've been doing that. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's no uh, fireworks or anything like that. It's just basically just living. And, and, uh, Sometimes there are fireworks, and sometimes there's a lot of doldrum, and, and a lot of uh, being able to push yourself and to continue and to and to, uh, and, and to just you know have um, have doubts, you know, and, and that's part of it too, self doubt and, and uh, all that, all that is is is, is part of um, I guess my. My um, my life, you know? and, and, and of course, there's a whole lot <laughs> probably left out that I never really ever give it too much thought. You know, like the, the work that I do here, and the work. At, this this garden is actually this is, is really has been a, uh, and and really what it, what my source of inspiration basically is uh, the, the greatest source of my inspiration is, is nature and uh, you know this 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 wonderful thing that we've been giving given uh, humanity has been given uh, and it's all around us and and uh, and this is my greatest source of inspiration is to see and feel. What nature is 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 giving me, and and um, and I 
and I'm just and I just move with it. I just kind of like I see it, I observe it, and kind of like, um, and I would think I ho and I hope to think I'm observing it in, 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 in a in a sense, uh, in a depth, in a greater depth. But it's it's probably more of a sense also, and, and I, I'm. So I, I'm sensing nature and, and it's all of its movements and, and um, vitalities and its growth and and I'm, I'm and I'm absorbing that and um, and that's what compels me to do different things um, uh, and it just may be something simple as um, is, is trimming a tree or, or cutting some bushes I'll see something and I'll make a connection and I'll look at a branch or a leaf and I'll make a connection or an insect and I, and, and and there it is. The insect is telling me something. Nature's teaching me constantly, and uh, I'll watch it and I'll observe it. And I'll forget what I'm doing, and, I'll, and and so. But I think all these things kind of like um, somehow, <laughs> somehow I don't know what the word is. It where it just kind of uh, just just gels and it just mixes up inside of me and it just comes out somehow, and and it, and, and and it may come out in materials like I'm just using like styrofoam right now you know and and and, uh, and, and I, <laughs> I may paint on it or, or or do something with it but but actually this this piece is and pieces like this it probably stemmed from what I've observed from a, a seed pod from a tree and how it falls from a tree or a leaf or uh, or, or, what, or looking at the uh, wisteria, the wisteria seed pods, or or the or the myrtle tree seed pods, uh, and just just different elements of, of, of nature that I, I that I've constantly observed, and um, and so there is some kind of uh, connection, and it may be totally I don't know you might want to call this abstract, but um, but I think it's kind of cool. You know? <laughs> and, and, and and one thing I know, one thing about nature, though, I, I it, it's it's alive. You know, it's there's so much life and so much vitality and everything that we we see and feel, and, and that it's around us. And I just embrace that. And you know, and um, and so I guess I'm pretty content, really. Someone asked me one time, "What is your what is someone, what was what was the question someone asked? What is your View, or, or what, 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 how they say, how, how they ask that question? If you had a, uh, um, a wish, uh, then, I forget what they asked. Me. If you had a wish, or what would you wish for, or something like that? And I said, well, you know, and I gave it a lot of thought. And I go, wow, I was kind of taken aback by that question. And I gave it a lot of thought. I go, well, I'm pretty content. <laughs> you know, really, I'm alive. I'm healthy. I mean, I create stuff. I have two beautiful kids and a beautiful wife. You know, I have a home. I mean, I have a place to work. You know, um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's, that's not bad. You know, and you gotta, you have to, uh, you have to embrace the small things. I think in life to be, to be happy, and and I think I've done that, and I think I'm still doing that. You know, and I, sometimes I may get off course. There's no lying about that. I mean, get off course. And, but um, there are things and people, friends, will kind of reel me back in and set me on the right course and say, okay, man, all right, let's start all over. Let's, <laughs> let's continue from here. Um, this area is, is a working class area and always has been a working class area. Um, and uh, and it's transformed quite a bit, and it is still in transformation. Um, it uh, as far as as far as uh, being an artist, a young artist, not knowing that I was an artist in this neighborhood, um, it had absolutely no effect on me. I mean, I didn't. I mean, there was nothing here that would that would. Uh, Induced me to do art, or in, 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 it was, and there's nothing here that compelled me to do art either, uh, as a as young as a youth. Um, 
in Long Beach, generally speaking, there was there was nothing going on. Um, the only thing I remembered in Long Beach was a uh, paint sign of a fisherman. And this this Jerry and his buddy, they were making paint sign signage for buildings and and for businesses. And he and his, he just painted this one thing across from Burnett Elementary School, and it was on the wall. And that was the only thing that I saw. It was it was about a hardware store, and they're fishing in a boat. And that was the only thing that stayed in my head. Well, that was the only thing that was here. Anything painterly, anything artistic or anything. And so um, that had a great effect on me because, you know, as I became an artist, as I had all this now information, um, this art information, I wanted to bring it back. I mean, I, I was here, so I wanted to um, just share it, really, and just give it give it away, just share it with, with uh, those who were, those, uh, the youth that were talented in this neighborhood. And I know there's a lot of talented youth in this neighborhood, uh, either in um, singing and dancing or applied arts, whatever. And so I was able to hook up with, um, uh, I, I did, uh, I was with the, was a mural project and they did some paintings with the mural project and they had some at-risk youth. Uh, um, I was supervising them, how to, teaching them how to paint, paint on, uh, do mural, uh, um, mural painting, and and so it, I, I really got into that. It was really, it was really, um, it, was, it was really a, a, you know, for, for me. It was fun and, and rewarding. And uh, also my my dear friend Dixie Swift, uh, she got me a, a couple of gigs. Uh, well, she she um, hired me as a supervisor to teach the youth to glaze on tile um, because she knew that I had a ceramic background, and so um, I taught them how to. Glaze on tile, and we, and I uh, had, um, well, just about 20 youth again, you know, in this from this neighborhood, and I, and we, we um, made over 93, four by six murals for bathrooms throughout the for these parks and 16 different parks in, in Long Beach, in the restrooms and and uh, in Colorado Lagoon, um, MacArthur Park, uh, Houghton Park. And uh, this was back in, uh, I guess, in the uh, late 90s, 1990s, and uh, that was a, quite a project. And so, it's it's I've been able to um, share what I've learned, uh, and and I and being right here is is um, is what I'm continuing to do. Is is you know, now, although I'm not teaching, um, you know, youth. Or, or adults or whatever I'm not teaching, uh, they would come to me and ask me if, if I am teaching or, or do I teach? And I said, I'm teaching every day because I am teaching. All, all, it's, it's no matter, it's not the matter, it's not for me to, to uh, sit someone down and show them how to, to draw a line. They can do that or, or, or to, to splash some paint on, on, a, on a canvas. Um, they can do that. Um, but if they were to just pick up, I tell them, hey, just, have your kid come over here. Bring bring a sketchbook and a paper. All you need is a notebook and a piece of paper, a, a paper and a pencil, a notebook and a pencil, and draw anything you see out here. I guarantee you'll learn line, you'll learn design, you'll learn volume, you'll learn all these things that I had to learn, and it's right there. But they have to learn. They have to apply themselves, and because I'm not going to be the one to to guide their hand. Um, this is something that they have to do themselves, and because it's all right here, and uh, because as I had to do, I, I drew um, leaves, trees, plants, animals, dead and alive, um, and I just people, portraits, uh, figurative work, and I, I've, I've really uh, was I really um, you know was a, a very conscientious student. And if you want your child to become an artist, there's no shortcuts to it. You know, just, just apply yourself. And have them apply themselves and just support them. And, uh, you know, that's it. And so, basically, that's how this being in Long Beach has actually played a, a, a great part in it. And I, I'm, I have no intention of leaving. You know, I mean, I'm here and, and I'm still teaching. If there are those willing to learn, you know. But what I'm finding out, what I've seen, and what I've been here 
for a while now. Everybody wants to know, everybody wants to do and uh, learn what I know right now. They want to do it now. And uh, it doesn't work that way. You know, these can't. I, I, I'll sit them down, I'll give them a piece of paper, I'll give them some pencils, a color pencil, whatever, and I'll have them draw something, and they'll get tired. First five, two, three minutes, they'll get tired and, and discard what they're doing. They want to know what I know now. It doesn't work that way, and that's what I see. You know, but it's okay because I've given them an opportunity, and and that's that's um, and that's very uh, valuable. You know, and so that's you know, that's that's what it's about, I guess.